Hey guys, so this is the first episode of Beginner's Patches. If you want to know more about this series, there's a link in the description to the introduction video. And like always, write in the comments what you would like to see in this series, what would you like me to concentrate on. And today, for the first episode, we will start with a simple sequence using only the VCV modules. So let's really add the sec 3, this one. Um, and this sequencer is quite unique because it has three rows we can use. It has a global gate output and also individual gate outputs for each step. And it has also a built-in clock. So we don't need to use an additional clock module. And we can change also the amounts of steps from one step to eight. For our voice, we will use the VCO1 this one here which is also quite interesting because it has two modes analog and digital and if we look shortly on the scope let's add the scope here let's use for example a triangle wave again i'm using a uh, color codes so red means audio so if we look on the scope let's do something like this we can see that the analog version is quite round but the digital version is linear and sharp you can see this here. This is the analog, quite round, digital, really sharp and linear. And this is uh, will be the same also with the other waveform. So if even with the sine wave, the digital will be less round than the analog one. Let's zoom in even more so you can see this. This is the analog version. This will be the digital. You can see the differences also with the sawtooth. You can see the analog one is quite round. And also with the square wave. Very nice. Now this means, of course, also differences in color and sound. And now let's send the first row of the sequencer to the volt per octave input of the oscillator. Um, volt per octave, we have a yellow cable. Now, the volt per octave input is usually, and I want to emphasize this, usually, not always, the volt per octave input is where we will send the pitch information to, in this case, the signal coming from the sequencer. Let's also use the VCV mixer. Let's put the scope shortly here. Let's send the triangle wave to the mixer. We need the red cable and the mix output to inputs one and two on the audio module. Again, red cable, and we have already sound. Very nice. Now we can start changing the values of the first row. Let's do something like this. And we have a sequence. Not so interesting, maybe, but still a sequence. And there is something I want to show you about the sequence, about the sequencer. So let's turn down the volume for a second. I will stop the sequencer. Let's reset it also. And let's set it to have only one step. And you can see that I turn the knobs of each step only slightly. And I want to show you also why. So let's send the second, the second row to the scope. And you will notice that by turning the knob of the first step, we increase the amount of voltage coming out. You can see this on the scope. And it starts at zero, of course, and goes all the way to 10 volts, positive 10 volts. Now, most of the times, the oscillators we are working with in VCV rec or hardware will follow one volt per octave which means that for each octave, we have to add one volt. So if we have a range of 10 volts, we have a range of 10 octaves, which is quite a lot. And that's why I was careful with how much I opened the knobs for each step. Of course, there are ways to control this, but we will come back to this in a different video. So let's run the sequencer again, bring back the number of steps to eight, and let's listen to the sequence. Now you can hear that the notes are not really musical, and I'm sorry I'm using this word. Uh, if there is another word, a better word for this, let me know in the comments. But we can use a module that will take the signal from the sequencer and will force it into musical intervals. And this module is called a quantizer. So let's use the one, of course, from VCV. Let's put it here. 
Now let's send the sequence first to the quantizer and then to the oscillator. And now the signal is being quantized, is being forced into musical intervals. And if we have one volt um, per octave, each semitone is one twelfth of a volt. And we can also select specific intervals we want the signal to be quantized to. And in this case, we will start from the upper most line. So let's say we want a major scale. We will deactivate the intervals we don't need. So let's say we start with C. C sharp we don't need. Then we have D. D sharp we can deactivate. Then we have A, M, E and F. Then we have F sharp that we don't need. G, G sharp we can deactivate. A and again A sharp we can deactivate. And now we have the major scale. And the signal will be quantized, will be forced into the scale. And the bass note of the scale will be the pitch we tune the oscillator to. So if you want, for example, an A major scale, um, we will have to tune the oscillator to A. So if I right click the frequency knob, I can enter the exact um, um, value. Um, so let's say that A is 440. So I enter 440 Hertz. And now we have A major. If you want C major, we can just go back to the default tuning, which is by default tuned to C. Very nice. Now let's make the sequence a bit more interesting by controlling also the amplitude of the sound over time. And for this we can modulate the level of the mixer, which is actually a 4 channel VCA with a mix output. A VCA is usually a voltage controlled attenuator, but in this case we can also amplify the signal. So we are dealing with a voltage controlled amplifier and the voltage controlled part means that we can control the amplitude of the signal with voltage. And in our case, we will use an envelope generator again from VCV. An envelope generator will generate an envelope that will control and change the amplitude of a signal over time. And this specific envelope has four stages. So let's really look at it on the scope. Let's put it somewhere here. Very nice. And we will need to trigger the envelope. So let's um, trigger the envelope with the gate output of the sequencer. Triggers and gates are blue. Let's make this sequence a bit slower, something like this. And let's also look um, at the gates on the scope. So let's take here the gates to the scope and the ADSR to the scope. Also modulation is green. Let's do something like this. Very nice, so we can see this. So the first stage we have is the attack stage, which means how long it will take for the signal to reach its highest point. So with a very short attack, the signal will reach its highest point very quickly. So if I take it all the way to the left, you can see it here. This will be the attack stage. Let's try to have a better look at this, something like this. This will be the attack stage. I can make it longer something like this maybe and you can see that it will take longer for the uh, signal to reach its highest point. Now there is a point where the attack time is so long that the signal doesn't have enough time to even reach its highest point before the gate is closing. So if I take uh, the attack time even further you can see now we are here. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see this better. And now it's too long and you can see that the amplitude of the signal is already being reduced because the um, envelope generator doesn't have enough time for the attack stage or segment. So you have to keep this in mind that some stages of an envelope live or exist inside the gate and if they are too long they will not have enough time to complete their stage. And this is the same with the decay stage. Um, the decay stage is how long it will take the signal to decay to the sustain stage. And also here we have to understand the limits of the gates we are using. So if I take the decay a bit down, we can see we have, let's take the attack a bit up, we have the attack stage, 
Then we have the decay, and here is the sustain already. So the decay time will decide how long it will take to the signal to go to the sustain stage. And also here, if the decay stage is too long, we can see that we are not, we, we don't have any sustain stage at all because the gate is already closed. So we have to keep this in mind. Now the next stage will be the sustain stage. And here, unlike the attack and decay stages, the sustain stage is not time related, but rather level related. So with the sustain knob, we set the level of sustain after the decay stage ended. And um, what will uh, be the amplitude of the signal until the gate closes. So again, let's take the decay a bit down. Now here, we have attack, decay, and now the sustain. And with the sustain knob, we can set the level of sustain. We can take it higher. We can take it lower. And it will look something like this. And the last stage, the release stage, how long it will take the signal to go back to zero after the gate closed. So let's take the sustain up. This will be the release stage, attack, decay, sustain, and then the gate closes and we have the release stage. Again, we can make it shorter. We can make it longer. And of course, also here we have to remember the gates because if the release stage is too long and the next gate already opens, the signal will not reach its lowest point and will already start a new cycle. So if I make the release longer, you can see it's not reaching zero and already being re-triggered. So we have also this to keep in mind. Now let's bring the speed or the frequency of the um, sequencer back up and let's listen to this again. Now let's send the envelope to control the VCA to the CV control voltage input of the VCA of the first channel. So again, modulation is green. Let's take the release down. And now we can start changing the envelope. Let's have a quicker attack. You can see exactly the shape of the envelope here. So this is something nice. Very nice. Now let's make this sequence even more interesting. We can change the sequence to have only seven steps. Maybe also a bit faster. We can turn off the gates of some of the steps so they will not output a gate from the global gate output. Let's do something like this. Very nice, we can change also the notes a bit. And again, thanks to the quantizer, we will always stay in the same scale. Now imagine this sequence with some delay and reverb. And that was it for today. Again, please let me know in the comments what would you like to see in this series. Keep in mind it's more for beginners to VCV and modular. Like always, there will be a link in the description to this patch. Feel free to download it and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.